Before we go into testing and construction, I'll give you a little bit of background how this came about. If we take a small coil, it's an air coil core. I have a small ceramic magnet. I'm putting 4.5 volts into it. So the voltage is set and the current is set. And we have a certain reaction. I have them in uh, repelling mode. Now if we keep the same input voltage and amperage, but we change the strength of the magnetic field, I have a small neo, we should have a stronger reaction to it. You can see that it's a stronger reaction. Keeping the same input, same voltage, same current. What would happen if we took a large magnet? And of course we have a stronger reaction. There again, keeping the same voltage, same current, but increasing the field of the magnet. So I came up with an experiment as I was doing this. I made a pancake coil, no iron to it. You can see that there's no drag at all. If I had an iron core in there, that would hold to that. This is a three inch neo magnet. This has, I think, about two, two, a little over two ohms. Put that in repulsive mode. And you can see that we have a tremendous reaction there. So I logically assume that if you had an infinitely strong magnetic field, and you took a small coil, you could actually lift 10, 20, 100 pounds, 1,000 pounds, a ton. It would be uh, almost limitless. So what I did, I built an extreme magnetic generator. I'm using two 3-inch neos. They each have a thousand pound pull off, so that means they have about a ton of magnetic force between the two. So if you decide to do anything along this area, it's completely your responsibility, of course. But you can see it moves freely. I'm going to put about Two point two volts per division into it. Let's, uh, let's see, two, okay, point two volts per division. So we have a uh, two, two and a half. So we have probably have a uh, point three, point four volts going into it. We have two point two cycles per second for my frequency generator. I found a phenomena. When we allow the reaction to take place, the input voltage, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, we allow that to swing. Ooh, put that down. I'm going to put that down to uh, one volt per division. The extreme magnets, uh, they play havoc with my scope there. I'm sorry about that, but I have about four to five about five uh, divisions there. So I went from 0 0.3, 0 0.4, say 0 0.5, half a volt, to about five volts. So that right there, there's about 10. <coughs> about 10. <clears throat> and uh, let me get this going again here.
I boosted it up just a little bit. I found out that as you increase the voltage, the reactive reactive voltage increases stronger and faster than the input voltage, so your over unity effect is even greater. I had uh, 13 times over there earlier, so I don't know what the uh, top rate would be. But I have uh, six LED lights. They have nine LEDs in each one, so that's six times nine, 54. LEDs it's firing plus the one. Now if we stop that we're back down to the normal input voltage of about say half volt. If I allow that to go ahead and swing there we are. What happens I logically assume that this is acting like another battery and it's in sync in series with the input voltage. So we have the input voltage plus the reactive voltage which is much greater and the reason why the reactive voltage is greater than the input is because of the extreme magnetic field it does not take much to actually swing it through that field. So that's where the over unity is coming from that the field is so intense that the small input the reactive voltage is much greater. So I'll give you a little bit of the construction there. The top of there, I put like a pendulum effect. It's a uh, little bolt there and with threads on it. I put a nut on there and glued a wooden dowel rod. So that's my pendulum effect. You can see the what happens there. And then I'll go back to the 0.2 volts per division. When the 1 volt per division, it doesn't seem like very much, but let that swing a little bit. And uh, you can see how that the over unity effect kick, kicks in from the extreme magnetic force. If you had less strong magnets you would finally come to a point where you'd only be five times over unity then less than that then four three two one if you had uh, less strong magnets then you'd get into where it was not over unity but because the extreme magnetic uh, field there we we're actually over that point where we're over 100 percent you know as much as I do, I wanted to get this documented, so I went ahead and made the film. So I hope you can access a little bit of information and a lot of happy experimenting from here. About 2.2 cycles per second. If you had a lighter coil, you could get that at a faster cycle per second, and therefore you'd have even a greater over unity effect. So thank you for watching.